when person uses their logic they think that oh there's so many wonderful stories during the first two books of the Chumash of the five books of Moses and now we got to this part of the story of receiving the Torah perhaps the narration of the story will continue but instead of getting a narration of the story Parashat Mishpatim has practically no narration whatsoever no story whatsoever but rather it's an entire Torah segment talking about different rules and in fact when you look at these rules you look at these laws perhaps there are some of the most controversial laws in the Torah according to today's society's ideology uh, and uh, when you see for example that the Torah says uh, you know you shall not have mercy upon a pauper in a dispute you know the liberal mentality of today uh, is going to say oh look you know God is telling them their Torah is telling them because obviously they don't necessarily always agree that God gave us the Torah they uh, this religion is saying that you should be mean to uh, to poor people why should you not have mercy on a uh, on a poor person in a dispute you should have if one guy is rich and the other guy is poor you should and they have a fight between them just give it to the poor guy but the Torah says the exact opposite you're not allowed to do such a thing you're not allowed to have mercy on the proper so of course anyone that does not learn from a scholar of Torah and instead learns from anti-semites and anti-god people that uh, claim to represent God like the uh, uh, he, uh, black Hebrew Israelites or Louis Farrakhan or uh, the uh, Christian missionaries that now call themselves Messianic Jews if you learn the Torah from such uh, evil people then certainly you're going to arrive at the wrong conclusion and start thinking that you know more than God you are more merciful than God and perhaps this is not a book to listen to so this particular segment that we're going to go into tonight is going to address address some of these claims that are made by the people that hate the Jewish people and hate the Torah and in fact take different parts of the Holy Torah and whether it be the oral Torah especially or the uh, written Torah and manipulate the words in whatever fashion that they want in order to make you believe that this is a mistake you shouldn't listen to it and of course the average person out there that sees some of the lectures that we have uh, like the clips that we published uh, recently on TikTok and other places saying that the halakha the law according to the Torah for a man to waste seed is that it's equivalent to murder that's what the Rambam paskins as the law this is the same thing as what the Torah itself says but uh, a person that is an atheist or is liberal or uh, you know or anything else will say oh look at that they even want to manage my uh, private uh, moments with myself this is uh ridiculous too much religion too much control this is obviously bad now of course anyone that knows the law and has watched the lectures that we've discussed this issue uh, sees that uh, the best thing you could ever do for yourself is to protect your seed and not waste it and needless to say follow the rest of the Torah but when it comes from either an ignorant teacher or a biased teacher a teacher that has an agenda such as the one that's uh, the agenda that's being taught in multiple volumes of uh, Louis Farrakhan's book the uh, secret relationship between the uh, Jews and the uh, blacks uh, which obviously has caused quite a bit of tension between the two communities uh, in, in recent years, especially this last couple of years, uh, even though it's been published for many years already. The reality is that when somebody like that teaches you the Torah, then of course you're going to arrive at the other side. You're going to agree with them. You're going to say, wait a minute, you're telling me that your Talmud tells you that uh, a three-year-old uh, girl can have sex with, a, uh, with an adult? you're telling me that slavery is a good thing and slavery is something that the Torah supports you're telling me that uh, you know the uh, uh, these laws are things that you guys still hold by you're following the Talmud now of course we do follow the Talmud but not your interpretation of the Talmud and in fact one of the most important things that a person can do for themselves is to make sure that they listen to someone that actually knows what they're talking about not necessarily somebody that's just simply a good speaker and has a good vocal cords that uh, ensure that the listeners in the back of the uh, 50,000 people stadium can hear so 
Of course, one of the things that we see in this Holy Torah, in this week's parasha, is one of my favorite verses in the Torah. They're all beautiful, they're all wonderful, they're all music to my ears, but of course there are always things that stand up. There are always ones that, you know, you can uh, uh, really uh, see uh, yourself in. It's Midvar Sheker Tirchak, the verse that says, from a thing of lies, stay away from. Stay away from anything of lies. Unlike all of the other sins in the Torah where Hashem says, you're not allowed to do this, and you're not allowed to do this, and you're obligated to do that. When it comes to lies, Hashem says, not only are you not allowed to lie, but you have to stay away from lies. Stay away from liars. And unfortunately, when the vast majority of society is ignorant about the truth, because their first time uh, and only time of hearing any aspects of the Torah is usually coming from the likes of the people that I mentioned, then what ends up happening is that that becomes their version of the truth. That becomes their truth. That becomes their ideology, if you will. Or better said, that becomes their excuse to hate the Jewish people and hate the Torah and hate uh, everything that has to do with it, even if they say they love God. So, it's time we address some of these things by simply looking at what the actual Torah says. What does it really mean? And in fact, one of the things that I learned early on, the first book that I ever got from my rabbi many years ago, uh, that uh, for anyone that wants to learn the truth behind the Jewish ideology, what you're supposed to have, this is a wonderful book that was written about 70 years ago or 60 something years ago by Rav Avigdor Miller, Aleva Shalom, called Rejoice, O Youth. Now this is a interestingly written type of book. It's a, uh, a conversation between a rabbi and a uh, young man that is having trouble with his faith, although he is learned uh, to a certain extent. And uh, really all of the possible questions that you can come up with are listed in this book. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to everybody unless they have some basic foundation of, uh, of Torah, but certainly if you have questions, this has answers. And one of the questions that you'll see on um, page 197 is the uh, young man is asking about why is it that uh, we're not uh, allowed to uh, teach Torah to the Gentiles specifically, or perhaps better said, why is it that the oral Torah that was also given to us on Mount Sinai remained oral Torah for many, many centuries? Why didn't God just simply write everything and allow uh, everybody to have easy access to it? Now, of course, as a side note, anyone that's familiar with the oral Torah knows that the oral Torah is not just a single book like the five books of Moses that can fit into your pocket if you really, uh, you know, have small enough uh, print. Uh, but rather, the oral Torah is a uh, monumental uh, work that literally is comprised of millions of books, millions of books with the basic foundation, starting with the Mishnah, uh, then, of course, you have the interpretation of the Mishnah, which is the Gemara. Then, of course, after that, you have all of the uh, uh, laws that are in the Gemara were also uh, uh, you know, put into the Rambam, the Rosh, and eventually the Shulchan Aruch, all of the different Rishonim, the uh, early sages that took the laws from the Gemara, from the Talmud. Gemara and Talmud are uh, synonymous. And uh, they're, uh, they, they, they mean the same thing. It's just a, uh, uh, in the old days, it, w it meant something different, meaning that initially it was a, uh, um, there was less than what we have, uh, what was the original plan. I'll get into that a little later. But point being is, is that this holy Talmud or Gemara is not inventing anything new. It's simply telling you what the Mishnah is actually saying. And uh, the sa showing you what the sages are debating, not because they're, they don't agree of what was said at Mount Sinai, but rather they're showing you that they have asked every possible question about this particular law that is brought down in the Oral Torah, 
in order to show you that there every possible thing that you can ask every possible thing uh that you can uh, uh conjure up in your mind was considered and therefore uh, uh if it's uh if it wasn't chosen there's a reason of why it was chosen which is elaborated in the gemara most importantly they're telling you how the final law the final conclusion was arrived at but of course the uh the, the anti-semites the haters of judaism are not going to tell you that they themselves don't know that they simply just take one sentence out of the gemara and they uh, manipulate it interpret it in whatever way that they want and they don't even know about the later books the other uh, uh, uh teachings that uh, stem from the gemara such as the laws they also have no concept of what the other aspects of the oral Torah is, such as the zohar kadosh that was written even before the gemara was uh, by rabbi shimon bar yochai but rabbi shimon bar yochai unlike what people uh, 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 think he didn't just invent the zohar by himself if you've ever read the zohar reviewed at least part of it you will see that rabbi shimon bar yochai not only mentions statements made by other sages uh, and not just his own but is also quoting other books uh, somewhere around 60 different books that preceded the Zohar Kadosh, meaning that Kabbalah wasn't invented by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. That's also part of the what we received at Mount Sinai. And needless to say, all of these books are the basic foundation of the Oral Torah. But what, why did I say millions of books? Because as the generations continued to grow and pass and so on there was more and more elaboration that was necessary either in order to clarify something or in order to apply it to something that didn't exist back then such as electricity cars uh you know different types of uh uh time frames that existed for the jewish people whether they were in a pogrom and an inquisition there were even uh unique laws that were passed at the time of the holocaust anyone that read some of the work of uh, rabbi ephraim oshri who was inside the holocaust inside the uh, uh the the nightmare uh but yet still writing Torah there and explaining to people how to deal with difficult circumstances such as a woman that's pregnant uh, and is about to deliver a baby what should she do uh, and in fact uh, you know when when the baby was delivered uh, you know there was a uh, law that the uh, 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 the Nazis had you're not allowed to obviously practice any aspect of Judaism whatsoever and if she would uh, uh, give a Brit Milah a uh, circumcision to our son certainly this meant death for her and the baby but yet he writes about this and the woman did do a brit milah and the she was killed along with the baby uh and of course there was a person that asked another very difficult question where his son was uh uh in line to go to one of the camps uh and since this man was a very rich man he was able to bribe one of the nazis uh and uh in essence uh get his son out the only problem is because the nazis were so precise with their calculations that would mean that they would take his son out but put somebody else's son in and he asked Rabbi Ephraim Oshri if this is allowed if he's allowed to rescue his son knowing well that somebody else's son is going to replace his son uh so th- this is obviously a-, a life and death question but at the same token is your blood redder than somebody else's the point being is anyone that sees the psak halacha that was uh, written at the time of the holocaust by rabbi ephraim oshri by some other chachamim that were there literally you would just you cannot imagine the level of wisdom that they had the sacrifice they made but also just the impossible situation that they had to deal with much much more extraordinary than the general public knows